All right, can you guys hear me? There we go. I think at least my mic is picking something up. Let me know if you guys can hear me on the audio, and I will get started. Uh, we have quite a bit to cover, and uh, we're going to have some fun here today. So, uh, usually I've been <coughs> teaching you guys, uh, maybe just you know, showing you a few things uh, demo-wise about you know creating hard surfaces you know with a combination of ZBrush uh, you know things like Blender 2.8 using box cutter and hard ops uh, you know using a couple of other softwares that I've been integrating over time and so now uh, I've been using VR as part of my work experience and I just started to get started with it but I was kind of eager to show you guys how you might take some of your sculpts from Oculus, particularly Oculus Medium, and move them over to ZBrush. And so, uh, I guess uh, without much ado, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and image. Uh, let's do the webcam, sweet! And you can see me with my happy VR set here. Uh, the one that I've gotten, uh, just to sort of show you guys on camera before I go and share my screen, this is an Oculus Rift S, brand new. Um, comes with two controllers. It's pretty neat. Uh, and these controllers are going to be what I use to manipulate my inputs uh, in virtual reality. Uh, and I actually highly suggest this one, um, more so because if you're looking to get into VR as a beginner, um, it's actually a really nice package. It doesn't actually need sensor arrays that you need to spread around the room. Uh, say like in your safe corners or whatnot so that you can define your play area it actually does it for you through the helmet um, because it has these small cameras mounted on the sides you know top uh, two in the front it's like a stereoscopic um, sensor array that's already built into the um, into the headset and all you need to do is grab it by the headset part the visor turn this dial here on the back to kind of open up the brace put it on and dial it to kind of close it in. And once you do that, uh, you should be able to see your environment in VR. Uh, it will automatically start uh, the Oculus software. So as I'm, as I'm gonna get started on that, uh, let me go ahead and boot up uh, ZBrush. And I actually wanna show you guys a few things. Um, first, uh, that are the end result of what I've been working on. So, uh, oh yeah, Rift S, badly, yes, indeed. I understand that, 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 uh, electronic device lust because I had it too and I had to do sort of my homework to see what would be more accessible and what kind of package would be like sort of the the best to get into so what I've done is I went ahead and got an oculus s and it was less than I would say less than 400 I believe or in and around 400 300 400 um, and of course you can get it on Amazon or what have you and a pretty good deal on Amazon so I bought it there anyway so I'm gonna test that out, and again, let's just have a look at the controllers. I have like little, you know, tethers on them. But all of these controls in here are what I'm gonna be using. And these are actually touch sensitive, so uh, when I'm in the VR environment, it's kind of hard to see it unless I was using medium. But you can grab things, and all of the buttons on here pretty much um, have contact sensors that actually show you uh, contacts in uh, VR. Right, so like if you pull your fingers in, you're gonna see your virtual fingers move um, along with you know the, the controls or functions, right? So yes, I'm about to start. Uh, just needed to get a couple of things sorted out because of the fact that the Oculus has its own audio inputs and my machine has its own audio put inputs. Sorry, I got a little caught up on uh, getting set up for the sound. But uh, maybe if we go over a little bit time-wise, I think we should probably be okay. And uh, then I'll, I'll cut it short at about, you know, the time. But fear not, if there's anything today, if, I have, if you guys have questions or anything, uh, and if I don't follow through with an answer, definitely I'm going to be continuing this next stream in. Uh, probably it's going to be spread out maybe about two or three streams for what I'm thinking about doing in VR. But I wanted to show you guys some of the sort of results that I've been getting. So uh, let's do some sharing. Some screen sharing. Uh, overlay. We need that. There we go. All right. So I'm going to start up. Actually, um, adversely. I mean, I know this is ZBrush Live, 
But for our rendering purposes, I'm going to start up Marmoset Toolbag 3. I'm going to show you guys a few things that I've been working on, uh, which had their origins in VR. Um, and not just VR, because, um, you know, VR is just one tool uh, as far as, like, either sculpting or modeling. And I take a lot of those meshes as sort of like concept meshes, and then I move them into ZBrush. And within ZBrush, you can go ahead and start to, you know, refine your model um, into something that is probably a little bit more plausible or usable by other packages, right? But the key to everything seems to be that decimation is a big thing between either one of them. So, like, if I'm going to move it out of VR, I need to save it, decimate it, bring it over to ZBrush, and then one of the foundation things that is a little bit different than modeling in VR is that most of the applications use voxels, right? And if you haven't heard about it, voxels is almost kind of like pixels, except they're 3D, tiny little 3D squares that make up the resolution of the model versus uh, polygons, right? So uh, here is a file I'm going to show you. It's open recent file, and I'm going to go to my space scene that I've been working on. Uh, with ships and whatnot. I've been designing a couple of ships inside of VR, doing some light kit bashing and then sculpting on top of those, a little bit more kit bashing in uh, ZBrush. And I have been doing this because I want to make an actual motion scene uh, out of the entire thing. So probably I will go to Octane and C4D later, um, animating and using all of the textures that I've come up with. So this, uh, hide. This, sorry, there we go. So this is an entire scene that I've been creating. And some of these you might recognize if you've seen my previous streams. Um, I've got like about three different ships here. And this scene actually features a guest model by Kirill Chepazenko, who in Fusion designed this carrier ship here. And all of these models, um, interestingly enough, um, were either done in VR or Fusion or, you know, adversely all of their different model, uh, modeling packages, which include ZBrush, and then they were all processed through an application called Instalot, which is basically a, a plugin um, that will reduce some of the, probably reduce some of the models, optimize some of the topology, usually for non-subdivided -sub uh, geometry, and then from there I save them out, um, actually processing them through Instalot for Maya, and then once I have that I have UVs on them, so they're baked. And I can take the baked version with UVs after it optimizes the topology, take the procedural maps that it has, and run those through, say, Quixel Suite, or you know, use Mixer to put in like procedural uh, textures into. Um, maybe you could even go into Mixer, make a material that you like, and then you know, with a model with UVs, you could procedurally work or you could procedurally work inside of um, I don't know why you wouldn't be able to do it in, in, in Keyshot or you know um, I like to use Octane myself a lot, uh, Octane standalone and Octane for Blender or you could use EV um, which if you're a Blender user you know that Blender is free and it has an awesome new render called EV which has a full-on node structure right but uh, to get sort of an idea of like you know where all of this is going. Um, I've textured up like three different ships now to sort of start a little space armada here. And all of these are all actually using extra decals that I've used. And some of these were, were done not only in just Quixel um, Mixer or Quixel uh, Suite, but they were also produced um, using uh, Substance Painter, which this long, more rocket-like ship here, the, the mid-sized ship, this was all done in Substance Painter. And some of the markings might be familiar because these are from a kit of um, sort of bashable decals that I've made as PNG files and they're transparent. So when, of course, when I go into Substance Designer, I can actually just create a fill layer and apply these as stamps onto a brush, uh, you know, with an alpha and basically just go around and sort of detail up the model after textures have been applied. And more importantly, these models, when you get into ZBrush, when you come back around in, in, in your process after you've sculpted things or after you've done, you know, retopology or what have you, um, and have UVs, 
Uh, when I bake things out of uh, Instalot, I usually take the OBJ or FBX uh, output of that model, and I bring it over into um, I bring it over I into Substance and then put decals on it, right? Or I use Quixel to do it, and then finally I take the maps that are outputted from that uh, and use those in Octane and or Marmoset, and I, and I do a lot of like um, little small like sort of cinematic clips with um, with Marmoset you know doing some of the keyframe animation using it here and it looks really great you know like finally you know to see everything kind of come together you know nice little edgeware and decals it sort of looks a little lived in you know and you can play with the lighting and staging and then furthermore I, I suppose you could probably move these into Unreal if you're using Unreal to create environments pretty soon I'm gonna try to you know create environments in VR um, I guess looking at the future roadmap of things and so a lot of these models that I create I mean I probably move them uh, into an unreal environment uh, versus um, using Marmoset but for now what I can do is I can use Marmoset for like sort of like a cinematic staging tool where you know if I have an OBJ or a couple of FBX's I can put everything together these are just instanced copies of each other and I've actually taken some of the lighter uh, drop ships and sort of you know laid them out sparsely so that it, it, it sort of parts you know populates the the scene a little bit and they also become anchor points for the scenery so like say for example in marmoset if i was to select a mesh and then hit uh control f it will focus in on that one and i can turn and get the perspective from here and then i could probably turn on the Lens, actually basically lens distortion uh, you can add a little bit of chromatic aberration get sort of like that l nice like spacey kind of camera look um, that's you know has like a lot of fill or flush um, cast lighting and stuff like that um, and also along the focus you can turn on DOF or depth of field and I use the sticky focuses you can see checked here because that way you know as I move the camera around you know some things might be out of focus and I can just middle mouse click on an object there we go let's see do it do it do it click it there we go and so it automatically will focus in on the model and sort of like from at least you know whatever's closest from that point of view and of course when you turn it you can go down and set what would be the near blur. So like if I'm blurring, you know, things a little bit closer up, you know, but not so much stuff that's far away, I can turn it that way, or I can turn the focus back down, draw the near blur a little tiny, and then make the larger that way. So that way I get my focus of the foreground object and things that are in the back are a little bit blurred out, right? But uh, you could probably dial that back to about half and get like a nice you know frame up for your scene and I think I used a just like a space HDRI that I got from somewhere I think I looked around online and found a good one um, but yeah basically a lot of these drop ships that are sparsely kind of laid out throughout the scene are actually you know some of them are turned sort of you know giving you the impression in fact the inspiration behind this is Star Wars right and I'm Star Wars and maybe something in between Star Wars and the Expanse, right? So I'm doing a bunch of ships that are, you know, Titan ships, uh, sort of in a narrative little story that I have going, and uh, they're, they're out on patrol, right? And of course, you know, you can change this lighting. Uh, you can add light areas or uh, skylights. So I have like a few pointillized here on the HDRI. And of course, all of these are movable once you get to Marmoset, right? So more importantly, let's get on with the fun. So I'm gonna see if I can uh, start up my headset, get this going. Any questions till now? Anybody have any questions? Ask me questions if you'd like. I will try to keep an eye. In fact, uh, if I, even if I'm in virtual reality, I'm gonna come back and check my second monitor in virtual reality so that I can see you guys' questions in real time. So. You'll have to pardon me. Sometimes, you know, wearing these things gets, it looks a little dorky. Let me see if I can make sure that my Oculus is started up. And let's see. Come on. Yeah, let's see. Restarted.
Hold on one second. Let's work this out. Gotta get my headset right. Hopefully, I will not have to restart my machine because that's kind of a pain in the butt. Every once in a while, um, the Rift, like in between restarts and whatnot, you will sometimes not get it to start up right away, even though usually when you put the headset on, it starts automatically. And so I'm going to try to see if I can square mine away for a second because usually it has to load its home and then you know you go from its home into the application. So bear with me here. Uh, just maybe a little bit of a technical hiccup. Give me one second while I'll sort this out. Is there an animation in the scene? So, um, let me show you guys really quick some things that I've been putting together. I'm gonna bring up a new tab, browser tab here. Go to my channel on YouTube. And I've posted a couple of things. Um, you guys can find me on YouTube as Tony Koro. That's T-O-N-I-K-O-R-O. -O. And I have a channel there. Um, and every once in a while, I've been putting up some of the experiments that I've been working on. Um, otherwise, uh, usually Instagram is the place to follow me. And here is what it looks like on screen. So let me just be happy to... Re I think I've shown you guys some a few of these clips that I've been working on, but... More specifically, I'm coming up with a new one for that space scene, and I want to guys or show you guys actually the model in VR uh, as it is. But here we have oh, turn on the speakers. Here we have uh, just a short scene of some camera movement around some of the early parts of this ship before I did like the mid-sized gunship, and just putting some keyframe animations to it in Marmoset and then saving those out as a PNG sequence at which I use them in After Effects, like this is all After Effects here. Uh, doing a, a key out, this scene is actually still being worked on, so for the clip I just wanted to represent it with the characters in green screen. But all of this, um, as you see, probably you guys have seen me working on some of this in previous streams, but um, just to cover bases, uh, I've been using a, a lot of, you know, kit bash of not only parts that I've built myself, but other kits, uh, just to build sort of like a cinematic look and design, uh, to make sort of like my own little animated shorts. Uh, and there are, are a lot of different software that are being used in this, namely ZBrush. Uh, ZBrush, Blender, Oculus Medium, Instalide, uh, Substance, Quixel Mixer, Quixel Suite, uh, Marmoset and also Octane. So if, if you were wanting the whole entire breakdown of everything that I've been using generally, um, that's it. And also um, for this scene specifically, I've been using uh, Mixamo and also Adobe Fuse, which is a character generation software in which I've taken some, you know, sort of default, you know, custom built characters, taking them back into ZBrush, building some in ZBrush some additional parts like the helmet, the box head helmet, um, you know, using PNG transparencies for like holographic uh, graphics, and then I compose them all in Marmoset and after animation, um, or using the keyframe animations there in Marmoset, uh, I export everything as video as PNG sequence, taking those to either you know Cinema 4D or After Effects, and then you can put together your snippets and clips, and then process them in Premiere or someplace like that. Uh, so, you know, if you wanted to make some sort of, you know, underground, you know, garage made mixtapes of, you know, your own computer animations, be my guest. Those are some tools that I suggest uh, to sort of get started. And it's really just like um, making little tiny concept art pieces, you know, uh, to show so that, you know, everyone can, you know, sort of get the idea of concept or of movement, you know, like a motion test. And so when I did this one, I basically, you know, used about three or four scenes and put them together and animated them. So there's the dropships flying over what is basically a terrain made in Quixel Mixer, right? So let's go back for a second and was the same with this one here. Here's another one that probably I'm going to revisit and it's of my tank, <laughs> spider tank. Uh, moving along with a couple of other characters same guys same sort of like little narrative story but um, as you can see after after effects and a couple of other things processing these they start to take on their own little you know signature look you know cyberpunky you know 
uh, darkly lit, a lot of fog, you know, having fun with it. So again, of course, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm still looking at uh, things on Twitch in the comments. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, are you saying you're going to model in the VR headset? Yes, I am. Uh, if I can get it straightened out, there we go. Just had to restart it. Okay, so give me one second. I'm going to start up medium, and you guys will be able to see my perspective once I share the screen. There we go. All right. Oh, cat. Oof. Sorry, my cat just tried to jump up on me. Crazy cat. Okay, so. Uh, this is the environment in Oculus Medium, okay? And I have uh, left and right hand controllers, and I should probably explain a little bit. You have a rubber trigger, which is the scale for your brush. So I'm going to bring mine all the way down a bit. Uh, you have a settings key. As you can see on my thumb, I'm actually touching the button of the actual cog there, and that is a settings key. So if I push it, it brings up the settings of either the brush or a stamp or move tool that I'm using whatever you know with all, with all the preferences that you need laid out here uh, I'm not gonna really do sculpting so much from here yet but I want to show you guys a few things first so I'm gonna start a file and I'm gonna actually bring in um, one that I've actually completed so far and I'll show you guys the ship uh, let me see here Boop. there we go so this is what the menu looks like for loading and what I'm going to do is actually um, load some OBJs as clay. Um, I have a few finished tools here that I've been working on in the last month, um, testing out Oculus Medium, uh, doing a few sculpts. But the cool thing is, and I can show you guys this, this is the menu um, for all of the projects that I've worked on. And these by now are voxels, but originally you know, when I do a sculpt or something from VR, I can cut them out as either FBX or OBJ and bring them right into ZBrush or any other package if you wanted to, but namely we're going to use ZBrush for this. So here's the ship that I created in that scene, and I'll go ahead and just put push load. But if you go to a directory where you have, like, say, Kitbash uh, pieces that are saved out as OBJs or FBXs, um, along with their MTLs or what have you, here are a few, you know, um, models and how they are presented inside of Oculus Medium in its, me in its uh, menu, which is great because you can exactly see what you need before you grab it or when you select it, so you're not always blind. If you have um, actual files that have like a lot of grouped objects and not with just one singular model that you've created, um, maybe something like a kit bash kit with like a layout of different parts. Uh, be careful if you bring them in as clay because sometimes it'll bring in the entire file. So it's probably good to save your parts individually and create an archive for them so that you can easily bring them into your VR environment. And that's not just for me Oculus Medium. That I would say the same if you're going to be using any other type of software, um, perhaps like a Masterpiece VR or anything like that, um, to integrate into your process. All right. All right, so let me straighten this menu out. I'm going to grab the ship and load it. It's going to take a second. And with this version, you're going to see probably that it's a little bit um, it's a little bit different than the final version that we have in render. And that is because, here, I'll take this and turn it around. And hold on, let me see here. I'm just going to put up my screen. You guys should be able to see medium still. But uh, I'm going to bring up my virtual desktop so I can see comments from you guys. Does it make you dizzy? Um, actually, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt. Um, actually, I, I noticed that, you know, especially when I'm using my work environment, um, I, did, I actually can pull the screen a little closer and I actually don't need my glasses when I'm working, which is great. You know, if you have uh, bad eyesight from looking at monitors for years, you know, this might be an option. So pretty cool for that. All right. So before I give you guys vertigo, I'm going to center in on this and try to look at this model and turn it around. And I'll show you a little bit about how it's built. I've got to reset my review here. Okay, so this is the top of the ship here. 
this is the bottom of the ship here and there are a couple of pieces that I used um, if some of you recognized I used some of my own parts uh, like this area here entirely I built this um, out of simple polys inside of blender uh, using hard ops and box cutter and kit ops which makes for some very nice details like these here these here where I used a very complex cutter to do a boolean operation uh, and then I use a few other pieces. Um, there's a, a gentleman, I forget his name, but you can search for his kits on either ArtStation or a Gumroad. Uh, and I think it's called Mech Nugget. And there's also a few Vitali parts in here. Some of my own kits in here, 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 and here. Uh, there's a few by Nick Govaco in here. A few more of my own. Mech Nugget. Uh, Mech Nugget. Or MechNugget had some really great uh, uh, conical boosters here, uh, you know. And so when I when I always get my money shots for you know large spaceships or something like that, I always like to make a, a sort of booster conical. And then inside, what I'll do is I'll nest uh, sort of like a torus shape or like a ring shape. Um, easy enough to find, especially afterwards when you're working in ZBrush. You can go in and just use one of the instant uh, multi-mesh brushes that are primitives, nest those in there, and then what you can do is you can duplicate those by holding control and using the widget, the world space widget tool, and you can just slide it over, or you could create one, slide one down, do one side, and then do a mirror and weld so that you get your uh, duplicates on the actual other side, right? And so that's pretty much how I got the thrusters to work. These shapes were kit bash from an actual like sci-fi container, Again, I have to refer to um, ArtStation for the gentleman who created it. I forget his name off the top of my head, but he had a really great set. I believe it's like 25 sci-fi props or something like that that you can find on ArtStation and just picked them up. Um, they were fairly inexpensive and really cool design-wise. Topology, you know, they might work, um, you know, like if you were using Max or Maya, they should present well. Um, you know, as far as your poly editing uh, package, but a lot of these I just brought them straight into, or you know, singled them out and brought it straight into VR, uh, so that way I can take a look at it. Now, if you're looking at me on that camera, I'm sure this looks mighty weird, <laughs> but uh, it's actually not so bad from your own perspective, All right? Okay, I'm just checking comments from you guys, but anyway, here let's um. Let's show you sort of an example. So, of course, I can trigger in both and hide or, you know, scale things up. I can also hide things. Uh, this finger here, as you can see, the yellow indicator with a little menu pad is basically your menu. Uh, let's see. So if I go file, let's, uh, let's actually see here. Um, need to actually go over to this side so as I said before these are all of the settings for your brush I'm actually gonna take oops let's see if I can do this oh yeah so you thumb down here on your rubber joystick on the left hand and basically what you'll go, do is get a scene graph and this scene graph is actually um, supported layers, right? So the scene origin, lathe, grid, sculpt, uh, mirror plane. Um, so if you select one of these, you might see start to see guides um, throughout this. And as you can see far off into the distance, there are actually like a, a corner binding box for the model area. Um, one of the things that I've noticed that one should be careful of if you're using VR is, and keep in mind, all of these things could be done through ZBrush if you you know, create um, your actual custom pieces using uh, Z Modeler, or if you you know come in and bring in some base clay you know uh, concept meshes that you build. Um, no matter what they are, probably at their resolution, you can bring them into Oculus and further your sculpting ideas, right? So, and it's actually not that bad for hard surface modeling. Um, so, but it needs a little bit of help because it's a little bit different than an actual poly editor. You're not going to actually draw poly faces here. Um, as much. It's, it's more of like just a, a virtual space in which you can do a lot of sculpting. Um, but there are some tools that are nested inside of uh, Oculus Medium that are very interesting to use with ZBrush in conjunction with. 
right? So most of this is just placement, right? So like I took some kits and I aligned them, I put them through, but I'm not really worried about the topology per se, right? Because when I actually take this out, it's gonna decimate the entire model. And then what I can do is I can use ZBrush's um, Z modeler feature, or excuse me, Z remesher feature, uh, Z remesher 3.0 inside of the new 2019. Uh, and I can actually duplicate a piece and then once I have the duplicate, I can show only the subtools that are the new piece and the original. Z remesh one of them, and then project the details from the previous onto the new piece, subdividing and rinsing and repeating, right? So like, you know, I might dis um, hit uh, the, the subdivision key, which I believe is control D, right? Um, or you could use dynamic subdivision and give it uh, an allotment of subdivisions beforehand and then you just rinse and repeat with going through each uh, subdivision step and projecting the detail back onto the new piece, right? Uh, and then, you know, you just hide or discard the original and then add the new piece to the model with subdivisions built in. And then you can carry on through ZBrush and do your normal sculpting routine, but it had originated in VR, right? And so this makes for a really quick process. It's, it's also very cool because you can turn and see, you can enlarge, like I could keep enlarging this. Let's see, let's see what this thing maybe looks like on almost real scale, right? So let's see here, I'll just take that and make it super huge. And I'll bring my brush, as you can see that there's that red highlight there. It's probably not gonna <laughs> let me go beyond that. But if you were to look at this in real scale, yeah, this thing would be massive, right? Uh, it's so massive that it's off the grid. So I'm going to bring it down just a little bit, and we could look at it a little bit larger. And that's the super cool part, is that you could see, you know, either true scale, or you could bring it in at true scale. I've already taken some sections where, like, I've made, like, a hallway piece and then stood inside of it. That's a lot of fun. Um, here's something where I'm going to actually later want to open up this airlock and be able to have like a bay inside so I have to model like a cylinder that's been reversed to show the inside and then maybe put some uh, you know air like bits or like a, a corridor design on the inside of that uh, but the rest you know is just for external show and some of the other ones um, when I got to Marmoset I took it back to ZBrush uh, added a few more you know parts like antennas the dish um, also, you know, big props to Vitaly Bulgarov for a few pieces or two in this model. Um, his kits are always amazing. And then, of course, you may not see it, but there's actually light sources underneath. And I have a couple of more modeling lamps placed. So you can actually kind of look at your model and sort of like uh, get a nice little clay render. Um, and, you know, after that, it's just exporting it, right? So let's uh, take a look. I'm gonna do like a new file. Yes. And let's start something new. I'm just gonna hit clay. And so what I'm doing here is I'm actually taking my thumb uh, joystick and I'm pushing it forward to get all of my different brushes. And um, here, let's try starting something just moderately. I'm gonna mirror. So if I mirror along the plane, uh, let's get this, and I'll start with a cube, and I'll make it additive, I'll make it a contiguous or continuous line or stroke type, uh, taper is of thickness, uh, taper speed, steady stroke, let's dial this back just a wee bit, right? Uh, and you also have, um, other kits that you can use for basic shapes. I think there's one in here that's just like uh, basic shapes that I've used. So, I, like, sometimes I like to sculpt things out with, like, a, you know, like a cylinder shape. There's also one more um, hard surface design that I'm going to show you guys after this that's really cool. But for now, let's show how to do at least a little bit of sculpting. There we go. And that is the start of a solid piece. Now you notice that some of this is like just kind of rough, but all of these things can be refined as we can come here into the menu, hit this. Um, I believe there's a 
Let's see, is it here? Ah. Scene grab. I don't want to add poly mesh. I actually need to go. Is it here? No. There's one window I'm looking for, and I'm not seeing it for some reason. Every once in a while, when I get working with this, I get twisted around so many times that sometimes there are things that I can't see. In fact, there's a lamp up there to show you kind of some things off scene. My floor has been set. There's an actual shadow on the ground down there, which is pretty neat. Uh, but first of all, let me see here. I wanted to actually create a sort of a take and do some manipulations. There we go. Okay, so. To man do um, regular manipulations, kind of like just like the world space um, widget tool, basically selecting is just taking and choosing an object, and then you can use manipulation, and it has like a world space widget. So just like regular modeling, you know, you can move this up or down, you know, along the X, uh, along the Z forward, uh, Y up, right? There you go, and then either back and forth on the toggle for the thumb uh, joystick um, will be the you know redo and undo on each either side um, you can also rotate objects you know just like the normal way that you would do in any other modeling package except for um, when you really look at these objects they are not um, poly objects it's almost like a dynamesh in the way that voxels works right So I can just kind of, kind of continue a sketch here. And I'm going to make one little bashable piece here, like a frame. And see, we're, we'll see how it comes out in ZBrush, you know, so you can kind of get an idea of um, how this works. So like, uh, maybe if I turn mirror off and let's see, actions. I'm going to actually increase the resolution. So when I hit increase resolution, you can see those large boxes there. So if I increase the resolution, basically the voxels are going to get smaller and smaller, creating more resolution for me to come along and sculpt into these things, right? Um, in the end, I wouldn't worry about it too much because um, I wouldn't go too high, uh, depending on the configuration of your computer, like if you have a lot of RAM or you have some very serious GPUs. I myself have one singular uh, 2080 Ti connected to my machine, and that seems to do you know a pretty good job of um, handling you know just basic sculpting. But I could see probably you know there being reason for you know adding additional GPUs uh, because sometimes the stuff can get a little heavy. But that's usually only if you up the resolution count. So here again, here's a piece where you see now that I've increased the resolution. The actual surface has gotten a lot smoother here and a little bit easier to work with. Right? So I'm just gonna come in kind of come in and do some basic like design like a frame. And I'm not being particularly, you know, accurate with um, some of the shapes kind of want to leave it a little bit loose. Um, this is this kind of way of, of working is almost like, you know, if you saw something like Sculptress or something like that, or or even working in Dynamesh. Um, in fact, I'm gonna hit over here. I'm actually gonna grab a cylinder shape. Um, let's do some erasing, and I'll go down a little smaller take that out take that out and right there let me check the comments oh yeah in fact this is exactly how I start working like um, um, I think I believe it's uh, super surprising to answer your question yeah this is this is how I sort of get started with something I start building like if I'm doing like a mecha or something like that or a vehicle I might start with like sort of an armature um, and then start detailing that, that armature piece and then build some other pieces or kit bash on top of that. And then, you know, after 20, 30 minutes of working, you'd be surprised at some of the, like, you know, 
nice little thumbnails that you you get to generate and so like I like to use this as a concepting tool I mean it's not always um, as finished and refined but um, definitely as an exercise you know or like say if an art director was to ask you for something very quick a VR environment in VR environment is very cool for for something like that like um, just being able to quickly come in and work with clay you know and see what you get um, do a lot of exploration All right so I'm gonna take this and let's say I'm gonna draw some more except uh, this time I'm gonna oops let's try let's try bringing in a piece of clay so like let's use that as the foundation and I'll add meshes clay and I'll go into some of my own archives here scroll down let's see let's find a nice piece of something in fact uh, Lots of little bits of things floating around as OBJs. Um, let's see. Ah, here's a nice little frame piece. I'll take this, and this will be part of something. Simple enough. And it says import meshes clay and fill layer. Now, this fill layer is one of those things that I've talked about where I mentioned just a second ago this binding box here, as you can see around the object that you're importing. Uh, or we're currently working on so basically this is the fill space or the resolution of it and sometimes at one It's a little low so I'm gonna actually just bump this up so I get a little bit of res Gotta be careful keep keep things close to the chest. There we go near 10% do it By hand alone one has to uh, aim accurately So I'm gonna there we go. 11% is fine enough. And I'll hit check. And then I'll thumb down on my toggle. And let's see. Probably need to select these guys. Uh, and if I look at my layers, I can probably just um, check all of them. So I'm going to check one piece. Uh, and I believe this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy are probably all part of the pieces that are down there. So I'm going to grab them because they were kind of off axis and bring it in here and see how that looks okay so that axis is just ever so slightly off so as you can remember again I'm going to use my manipulator key and while those are still checked you have to actually select one and then check the rest that are in that group uh, to move them and then the manipulator and I'm going to use the world space tool and I'm going to slide it over on the X and sort of line it up with my guy here and I can also hit the scale and grab one of these and bring the scale up. All right. And back to the world space. I'll thumb down, turn it out of my face, and let's see how we want this. So maybe this piece I want, uh, let's see, let's grab this guy and I'll move him aside grab this guy and I'll use that like maybe that and then this guy I'll bring him kind of like that I don't know what I'm making but I'm making something and then we'll move this guy with the manipulator and go down and slide this around through there handle a bit that would look cool and I think this guy now this is just a piece of kit bash that I have it's a piece that I think I sculpted up inside of um, blender really quick and I've placed it in here so let's see let me just show you some of the parts now that I've deselected them and we can see how they work out so as you can see because I upped the fill layer it actually retains a little bit more definition than it would have if I had just left it at default which is like just a fill layer of like one and so there's enough voxels to get some some really good impressions like say for example if I select this piece and I go back to my brushes right and I do some erase or negative or even additive 
we'll do additive really quick and I'll just come in here draw in some little notches and whatnot right maybe like an extra frame of some some sort you know you don't have to be super accurate you can make it fun but sometimes I can take these and just like retopologize them or I could use uh, like a steady stroke settings and come over here and just do this do this actually put this back down uh, and I'll maybe do a line and I could actually take this I believe with a line on you could draw a straight line see this guide that it gives you it's basically just like that and then let's see we'll turn it and I have mirror turned on so basically I could orient this just by basically doing a straight line right across right so you can get some accuracy out of it, which is very nice. Um, here, I think my, you know, my line was a little bit off, but you, it gives you a guide that you can use, and you can kind of get some nice straight angles from it. It's not all unusable. Uh, if you needed to be super accurate, I would move on to ZBrush and then take something like this and just Z remesh it, chop it in half, and do a mirror and weld so that you get both equal balanced sides. And you could probably clean it up, um, either using Z Remesh or something like that, right? Uh, or either going old school and just doing like um, some a pin method uh, retopo and just like straight up just make the piece, um, you know, sort of like a box of modeling almost. Okay, so here's a nice little kit of a framework. Only took a few minutes. I could put some start to put some mass to it, like a let's say let's go here. I'll turn the line off and I'll do additive. There we go. And I'll make a big square. I'm going to turn off uh, mirror and I'm just going to come in here and create like a volume that I'm going to use. Let's see here. Oh, you know what? Actually, let's do that on another layer. Uh, you can do new layer. And that way, basically, you can manage the piece without it being adjacent to other pieces. I just kind of want this to float in here, right? And then we'll come down here, right? Okay. So I'm going to leave that for sculpting later in ZBrush, but let's uh, turn this around. I'll do something like from here. And this is on the same layer. So layer, later, if I wanted to do something else, oops, I'm gonna actually have to separate the two pieces just like I would, you know, in a subtool. Easy enough to do. There we go. Not exactly balanced, but I'm just kind of doing some light sketching here, so I'm not gonna worry about it. probably mirror something like that and sculpt it up or something like that. Let's see. Actually, let's do, let us turn mirroring back on. And there, as you can see, there's lathe tool, grid snap, angle snap. I haven't used those very much yet, but I'm sure that probably you could use them to create more accuracy in shapes uh, once you get going with sculpting. So, okay, not the greatest, but we can work that out. We can work with that. We can work with that. We can get to that in ZBrush, right? So let's take this. And while I have that piece, I'm actually going to flip it, uh, do some action set here, and I'm going to actually duplicate the piece. And it doesn't didn't have one on, on the other side of the X, so I'm just going to flip the duplicate. And there we go, we have both sides, right? So it almost looks, you know, like when I look at the silhouette, it almost looks like something you could use as a hover bike, you know? And we could put this down here, 
and we could see where our hands would sit, you know. Maybe we could uh, come up with a frame of ourselves a nice little speeder bike somehow. And these are the handles, yeah, yeah. Might be worth some exploration to have. I don't know if this this bar works here quite yet, but once you get working for a while, you know you have kind of have something, and um, you could actually just kind of scale it down and look at it from different perspectives, turn it around, that sort of thing. So, namely, I want to use ZBrush maybe to create some volumes in between here, sculpt out the symmetry a little bit better on this mass, maybe develop this block up here. But basically, I just wanted sort of the design of the frame. And so, because it's so organic inside, and you, know, you can kind of turn it and see it and manipulate it inside of VR, it becomes very quick to develop something like this. It's really nice. All right, so let's take this model. And we have a few layers now. I just wanted to give you, you know, an example of um, you know, how to kind of stack some of these up. Uh, I'm going to save this out. Uh, diffuse light, diffuse color. Let's... Uh, if you guys want to give it some color, we should do that later when we start refining things a little bit more. Okay, so let's try to take this, and I'm going to save it out. So I'm going to export it, and I'm actually going to do this pretty much a default setting, like raw. Uh, I'm not going to do any texture, so just vertex colors, and I'm going to actually save it first out as an OBJ. Um, of course, FBX is totally workable. Uh, maybe five percent triangles so basically this is this is going to be the triangle count on your voxels so sixty five thousand eight hundred and forty six triangles which is actually pretty fair not not that bad so don't be afraid of that number so i'm going to take this and i'm going to go ahead and export it and let's give it a name so i'm going to clear here and i'm going to go shift t l underbar z b live Bar on nine twenty one twenty nineteen. There we go, and then we're gonna hit enter. And this I'm gonna actually save in some of my personal work or favorites. Uh, let's see. I'm actually, gonna save this down here. Derp, derp, derp. on this drive there we go for convenience and that OBJ TLZB live today's date demo A export and now we just have a minute to, to wait while it decimates this giving me an opportunity to check comments and see if you guys have any questions for me yeah yeah, they're, they're, it's a fledging industry, my man. Um, it's it's still very new, uh, VR, and Medium surprisingly seems to be one of the front runners as far as like um, 3D modeling, um, and and that's great. And it, but it's great also that we have tools that we can already use. Like um, we have ZBrush, we have you know so many other programs that you know to do our jobs um, to make th you know sort of like. You know, bring it back to reality basically so like you know what looks good in vr may not necessarily look good on screen and so sometimes you got to go back to your more 2d or traditional package you know 2.5d to do a little bit of design and come back um but i mean as far as like tangible you know thumbnails for meshes that sort of thing it's it's totally yes it is a blast yeah um I've been using VR probably about a month now um, and still trying to, you know, take the time to mess with it and explore and find out more. Yeah, yeah, nice to see you in VR, yes. So I was really happy to try to bring some of this stuff to you guys. So, um, you know, at least I can share with you kind of things that I've been finding out as I've been taking the journey. So that's what's important here. So, okay, so I'm going to go back, reset my view.
go into medium. So now, as you can see, the, the decimation is already ready and it's been done. So I'm going to put uh, medium on pause and I'm just going to come here and actually exit medium. I've already saved my model uh, out and so that has been done as an OBJ. But uh, I'll go ahead and just save this along with my regular archive of models that I've been doing. Uh, probably give it a similar name. There we go. Uh, wish they had a better keyboard in here, though. Let's see, brush. Saving it here. Save. All right. So real quick, before we go to ZBrush, I just want to dip into. Let me see our clock here. What time is it? Yep, yep. It was still good for an hour. Okay. So um, I want to show you guys one more that I did in here. Uh, just loading it, show it to you because um, I've been been able to take some of these and bring it to my Oculus Home uh, and actually, you know, look see them as you know live models in my little virtual living room which is great um, but I want to show you guys this one because this is the one that's probably the hardest so model so far that I you know the most intense model that I've tried to build and a lot of it came from shape language that I had already constructed oh there he goes and this is a little bit more towards something that is finished well, this guy is a mech that I made and I used some parts that uh, various parts that I've been you know modeling over time and some, as you can see, are probably already sculpted in. Like the rocket boosters off of this mech, the hoses that go in here, the joints and the arms, the arms themselves. Some of these are actually kit bashes that I've done previously, like the, my mech hand kit bash. Uh, this I did for a different mech uh, as a forearm design. Uh, sculpted in the elbow and the uh, upper arm. And the shoulders come off of a different mech that I was designing. I had like just the, the basic chunk of it uh, before I detailed it. Uh, so a lot of pieces came out of, you know, Blender uh, with, you know, box cutter and hard ops. Uh, these legs, a lot of these parts came out of Moy that I designed. Uh, so I just kind of took some things out of the archive of what I have and put them together and started to arrange them. And I really didn't use that much kit bash as far as like actual sets or anything like that. Uh, the rifle are actually was more detailed from another model inside of Blender that I used and so I just kind of grabbed it and reformulated the rifle added and sculpted some some parts on it you know the drums that sort of thing uh, these shields if you recognize them are off of another mech uh, that I have and then I just started from the head and uh, it was pretty cool while I was designing it I would actually kind of come in here and look through the neck area which would have been the, the pilot seat this was a mech and so that we're actually under the head inside of it looking outward and then that's the shoulders over there so it's always really cool to to kind of see these you know because you can you can really get an awesome sense of scale like if I scale this down I can actually hold my own rifle and that's kind of neat you know you can see if it actually the ergonomics of what you're designing if they work or not you know it makes me actually look from the POV of an actual mech you know blah 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 you know and there you go so pretty cool stuff actually and you get to experience what you're designing a lot more right so this is one that I've actually designed and I used poly paints inside of uh, medium it actually has a sort of poly painting system and a lot of these colors when they save out as an uh, OBJ you can probably get the colors back through an uh, MTL imported into ZBrush and actually uh, burn out a, a color map of that but if you're going to move on from that, if you manage all of your pieces very well, I want to show you guys something that you can do in ZBrush. So I'm going to actually close this. Now that I just wanted to show you guys that really quick uh, because it's a, kind of a nice one uh, to have messed with. So I'm going to exit medium. And I'm going to take a short break off of the heat of this thing because every once in a while, it doesn't mess with you. It doesn't make you dizzy. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a 2080 Ti, it has to be. Um, I, I would say that probably newer cards with like 2060s and whatnot, or, or higher, uh, or even if you have an older Pascal card, like uh, 20, uh, 1070 Ti, 1080 Ti, uh, those cards probably, even if you're running them in dual, 
could handle the job of doing some VR. But 20 RTX technology that is definitely very good for VR. Um, I, I don't do any serious ray tracing stuff yet, but you know I'm looking forward to it. But for Oculus Medium, it's it's quite nice and quite smooth. So I'm gonna take a break for lift this up for a minute. Oh my God, it's so hot under there after working in a while. So if you're not used to it, I would say uh, do yourself a favor and um, take a break from it and maybe, you know, do something like, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I must have actually had a different screen up uh, before. Sorry about that. Um, so anyway, it does get hot under here and you might want to give yourself a little bit of a rest because... You know the generated heat from this after you get going for a little bit while if you you know I have my, I have my place fairly uh, air conditioned but yes it does get a little sweaty under there so so account for that all right so let's go back to ZBrush I'm gonna start it up and show you guys what our parts look like afterwards The controller sensitivity, um, I think, super surprising, you are asking about the controller sensitivity. It's actually really, really good. Um, it does have some problems on the Rift S when you bring the controller close to the helmet. So I would, I would be careful about the distance because sometimes it kind of wonks out. You know, like if you're working like this and you got the goggles on and you're really close to your face, it actually reads the sensor pretty close to the actual uh, area sensors that are built into the helmet. And so sometimes it doesn't always uh, work out really good. Um, like it'll kind of jumps and skip sometimes. Oh, for some reason my tablet didn't get red. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to bring in just a polymesh star, right? And the good thing about the polymesh star, as most of you know, is it's already a polymesh 3D, so you don't need to actually click on make polymesh 3D. I'm going to go ahead and hit T so I can edit this object subtool right menu so that I can see how many subtools come in and then I'm gonna hit import and I'm gonna go down to my directory and pick my file let's see there we go demo A open and there's my shape right so when you look at the policy it was the other way, actually, I'm going to take off my headset. Sorry. I'm just going to time out for a second. All right. So now back in ZBrush, we can take our shapes and start messing with it. And I actually, I need to replug up my tablet because I didn't have it plugged in. Sorry. Derpity derp derp a derp. Oh dear. Oh, I need to get a USB space. Sorry. That's good enough. I think that should work. Uh, there we are. I'm gonna grab my XP pen tablet and get the right pen. And there we go. So um, in ZBrush, if you were to hit the polyframes, I'll set my other controllers up here. It would look like this. So it did actually decimate it. And of course, you know, if you individually wanted to take some of these pieces, you could use the world space widget, holding control, and click one. And if you just wanted to develop this piece, you could do split masked points. And now you have a separate sub tool. Same for uh, these. Like if I hit this, click here. And so with everything that's going to be in this poly group, I can separate. But actually, as you recall, it, I did it on the same layer. So I'm just going to mask this off split mast points and then we have a separate object and you just go and rinse and repeat through this and it'll give you different shapes so I'll split here and that way I can control each area like if I wanted to control the symmetry or let's say I want to Z remesh and retopologize something definitely you could do it through here and it's just a, a decimated mesh right if I wanted to I could even take a few of these parts uh, like let's say here on this one. Oh, no, 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 no. 
do. Alt, click on that. W, click here. Look at the polyframes. Split matched points. Right? So I'm just going to take this one singular spot and let's see. I'll turn off the polyframes. Uh, let's say, for example, I turn it, go down to geometry and turn it into a dynamesh. Uh, let's turn on polish and project. I'll turn blur to zero. Uh, resolution, I could do something like 224 or something like that. Dynamesh it and see what it looks like. Right? So now you have a dynamesh. And you could clean this up, clean up, re clean up bevels or anything like that. You could re dynamesh it and maybe some of the polish might work some of those edges. But this is an entirely just like a piece of clay that I can now, you know, do whatever I wanted to. If I wanted to cut some divots in it or, you know, uh, let's say I use the clip curve brush. And I come in and I do something like this. And I'm just hitting Alt to make those. Uh, hard poly, you know, hard planner changes in the selection. And bam, I can do that and then just remesh it and keep sculpting and refining. Also, you know, brushes like uh, uh, the hard polish brush, um, you know, the trim dynamic, all the, the classic brushes you could use on a surface like this, you know, or even, you know, take a Z-sphere, go at it, or either the topology brush and go at it with the surface and try to retopologize it. You could generate the part that way um, as well. But just to give you an example of how tangible these pieces are inside of ZBrush, you know, this is kind of the base at which I'm going to start sculpting stuff. Is just you know, creating like um, clay inside of ZBrush, and then coming back and doing some things here. Right. Um, adversely, I want to go um, to a bit of a, a different process also to show you. Um, I'm going to put this aside for a minute. Um, Basically, when you have an entire model um, and you run it through something like Instalod, uh, Instalod is uh, a software that's basically a plugin. And let me show you a little bit how it works. Um, I'm going to start up Maya just very briefly. Don't really want to talk about Maya, but I use it for a few purposes, mostly work purposes. <laughs> um, translates into polys. Polys into voxels. Polys into voxels usually works pretty efficiently. Um, I know there's a couple of other softwares, you know, such as 3D Coat, which I, I won't go too heavily into, um, that do some poly, you know, modeling or uh, poly modeling by way of voxels, actually. It uses voxels uh, to do a lot of its, its modeling. There's a voxel brush in it, I think. Um, that's really cool. Um, but that's just for, you know, concept sketching and then taking that out. You can also add some cool materials in there, I, I will admit. But uh, let me show you this. So in Autodesk Maya, usually what I'll do is bring in or import my model so that I want to optimize. Ooh, that's bizarre. Huh. That shouldn't be right. Well, oh well. There goes that. I'm going to have to fix my subscription somehow. But, yeah. Anyway, Instalod usually works inside of Maya. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's rather embarrassing. Uh, anyway. I'll show you guys something else, actually. Shame on you, Maya. Shame on you. away excuse me for a second I gotta work out something on my screen really quick it's for some reason oof yes oof is right uh, can't get rid of it it's like a pop up I can't get rid of what the heck derp, 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 derp. give me one second gents I'll work this out so I can get rid of and maybe refresh my screen for some reason I got a snag on my Thing. It might be because I recently moved my hard drive to a new hard drive from the old, you know, like 500 gig to one terabyte. And sometimes I need to check my license of some stuff. Uh, 
There it goes. Yay, it went away. Okay, so obviously I need to check my stuff with Autodesk. So, uh, I'm going to go back to ZBrush. I'm so glad it's, you said control delete. Although I know that one, it's usually a good joke if you call, tell somebody to delete Alt 4. I know that joke. And I would have said, I see, I see what you did there. But I didn't. I see what you did there. Anyway, uh, let's get back to it. Tile screen. Off. Okay. So, back to ZBrush. Um, one of the things that I would start doing something like this is take the parts and basically just do something like uh, selecting it uh, and then using the dynamic solo and then if I wanted absolute symmetry in between both sides what I would do is just um, take and hide one side uh, making sure that I'm kind of near the center or something like that so that's not that sharp let's uh, dynamesh this so we actually select it a little bit better uh, or you know what I can cut it no I'm just gonna do this and hide half of that and see where it is ah, that doesn't look very good so let's yeah let's dynamesh it because some of the this is decimated and some of the polys are not even so I think uh, maybe if you de you know do like a dynamesh of it it actually becomes a little bit more even to work with to the project, same as before, 224, and I'll use like a Dynamesh, right? And that way, if I hide half of it, it, the polys will be a little bit more equally distributed on both sides to mirror and weld it, right? So let's just do like a modified topology, mirror and weld. Oh yeah, I'm gonna delete the other half, or delete the hidden. So I'll delete hidden and mirror and weld. And then, you know, I can just close holes on the groups or whatever, or cut it exactly on each side. So, uh, weld points, and close holes. Actually, no. Let's go back. Cut this part off. And then, There we go, that's a little bit better, and then at least you can re-dynamesh that and get a cleaner construction from it, right? So naturally, you know, like if this, if something like this was polys, what I would do is probably just take it and do, either do a, a mirror and weld, or sometimes, you know, to start like doing like Boolean operations on it to like kind of cut it up and detail it. Um, I might re Z remesh this again and get it a little bit cleaner, or just take like a, you know, use like a, a poly block or like a cube and just start you know pulling you know the piping out and designing it um, in, in like a poly package you know either blender or Maya and then you know from there I bring it back in uh, to ZBrush and start sculpting on it right but the frame or the base of a concept mesh or its origins would be like so right um, I was kind of bummed that Maya wasn't running correctly because uh, at least within Instalot, I can kind of give you guys an idea of how I crunch things down. But um, for all of that, I'm actually going to refer you guys to a video by uh, uh, by Mike Pavlovich, um, in which you know a lot of the basics about Instalot he explained a couple months back, uh, and it's worth giving a watch because um, some of those tools are what I'm using. In fact, um, let me show you guys a few more pieces that I think I might have put together this way. So. Finally, when you look at some of the topology of some of these, like say this rocket ship per perhaps, when I went into Instalud, it's actually a little bit more cleaner tries, right? And because I'm doing hard surface stuff that is not gonna bend or break, uh, it's gonna basically retain its shape and stay the way it is, and I'm not gonna subdivide it. Some of them actually have smooth normals on them uh, turned on, and that is mostly for the surface so that when I uh, bake normals out, I get sort of like a clean bake from it, um, like it would be a subdivided model, right? And 
move this around and sort of show you. Um, but some of these parts up here, like the finite parts, as you notice, they were not on the model inside of VR. Uh, those are be there because the, I added them additionally in ZBrush later, and, you know, just like as in, as in insert multi-mesh brushes. Uh, and then added uh, coloring by way of uh, Substance Painter, right? And the cool thing about Substance Painter is, you know, re rendering wise, you have eye ray, so you, you can kind of look at, you know, your your design or your textures that you're placing on and see, you know, how sharp they look or how much they'll hold up. And pretty much, like, comparatively, I wouldn't say that they're the, exactly the same, but they're very they're very similar in their render touch is using stuff um, from iRay and then sort of guesstimating how it would look in Octane because Octane and iRay actually, you know, they're very GPU intensive renders. I, I should think that in some ways, some of the lighting, some of the textures look very similar in either of those renders or in Unreal because Unreal is really good, you know, with its rendering. Um, let's show you a few more things. Uh, while I have a moment, um, Oh yeah, this guy. Uh, yes. Okay, so this is the pr previous Mac that I was just showing you guys, and just sort of like doing a, a sort of conceptual thumbnail of it and exporting it. And I actually ran this one through InstaLOD and got some of the color on it um, by way of like. Um, just using a substance painter to just make some basic materials, right? Nothing special. But preview-wise, it looks pretty nice. And just a, like a basic sun sunlit, you know, horizon sort of a HDRI, you know, one of the basic HDRIs. And I just pointalize some of the light sources and just sort of to get an idea of what things look like. In fact, it has a turntable, so I can play it. And it's a great way to present, like, you know, little con concepts of, you know, or thumbnails that are have some complexity to them uh, but you know they can really sell the, the idea a little bit more and um, I actually created I think two textures for this um, one has you know uh, basically the color uh, roughness metallic and you know sort of in the same PBR fashion and there are a few uh, emissive lights on here so like uh, basically I come over to sky and, I, and rather than ambient sky I change the color and choose a different color I can sort of present the model a little bit more lit All right and cool thing is um, I've been experimenting with mixing some of these types of shapes uh, you know like um, VR model shapes uh, along with things from like Photoshop um, along you know because we have some emissives and you know dealing within a sci-fi genre it's kind of always interesting to do like um, decals that you know like like holographic projections and stuff like that which can can be done you know uh, in any of the renders you know with the decals that I showed you earlier a lot of them I flip them over to emissive designs sometimes uh, and use them as holographics in it. but I'm gonna actually explain a little bit more about that a little bit later but um, just to give you guys an idea of you know tools that I'm using um, to start this effort off uh, and how you know I get started, I would love to see if you have a VR headset. Um, you know, uh, make a post, tag me in it. Um, I'm around to answer questions even besides ZBrush Live sometimes. Uh, so you know, if I catch a comment or two, you know, if you guys hit me up, uh, you know, with a PM on Instagram or something like that. Uh, I would be sure to try to answer a question in, our, in off time as I can um, or you know while I'm streaming here with you guys uh, what's my favorite render my favorite render probably right about now is probably gonna be Octane a Octane standalone it's really cool has a lot of richness in light uh, and depth um, shadow depth and AO uh, are really nicely done and I can use a lot of the PBR style um, maps using roughness and metallic Albedo uh, and a few other maps and just plug those straight away into like a universal material and then put that on the model themselves and take a look at it. Um, in fact, for the ship, the gunship that I was just showing you guys in uh, Marmoset here, um, I had actually used 
uh, a combination of things. I used um, irate as I was texturing to sort of like figure out what it was going to look like. And then finally, I saved my map style out as Unreal Packed. So basically, your ambient occlusion, your metallic and roughness are all packed into one map, basically. Uh, so it g just gives you like the base color, emissive, um, your packed texture. So it's only like three, maybe at best four maps that you're dropping into slots uh, on a node. DM me on Discord as well. Um, yeah, sure. I, I, I actually am on Discord and you can always shoot me a message. Yeah, I'm around. <laughs> if I don't answer right right away, uh, trust me, I'll eventually get to it. I'll, I'll eventually uh, figure it out. Sorry, I, I am a busy guy every once in a while, you know, with kids and stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I love to take time to, to answer some questions as I can. So, you know, hit me up. So uh, I just wanted to introduce you guys to this process, but let's go back and have some fun a little bit. So uh, let's see. I'm going to turn dynamic solo off. I'm going to take this guy and actually move it out a little bit. Let's shift. Pull this apart. I don't know about this guy. This guy wasn't very even, but I kind of understood its shape. And the same could be said about this one, so I'll just kind of move it out of the way a bit. Right? It's not even, the edge is not even balanced, so it's kind of hard to pull aside unless you use the toggle hitting Y for the world space tool to a transpose hit W pull it from the center holding shift I think it should move it Voila. oh that's because I'm not selected on it bam center shift move it aside and we'll rework that idea a little bit because it looks a little off maybe a little wonky love that word wonky this makes everything just sound kind of messed up all right so those are parts maybe unused right so I'm gonna go and actually hide them for a minute hide this guy hide this guy uh, oh yeah it's still there because I'm selected on it right so we'll get a different piece and maybe I'll just take a bi and just get like an insert primitive and uh, hit M, get a Q cube. Drop this on here before. Like, I've showed you guys how to do pretty much stuff like this before, but just taking a Q cube and insert meshing it in and then splitting mass points after you draw it. And then just taking this, moving it out here. Let's say maybe I might want to scale it a little bit forward, tip it to the same angle as this lower bar. Pull this downward, maybe a little bit forward. And you know, you start to sort of sketch and block out some some cool shapes, you know? Uh, maybe pull it from the side. X on both sides, pull it equally. Uh, Z, get the Z modeler tool. And I could do actually individual poly faces. So and I'll do that. Pull this out. And I can also hit like a. Let's hit like a. There we go. Select lasso. I'm going to grab this, invert that, and actually use this to bring that down. this, do that, pull that back, pull that down, Oop. this, invert that, and pull this back, clear that, I'm going to hit B, Z, Z modeler, I'm going to hit the space bar, I'm going to say uh, insert on the edge. Ooh, see, that's not centered. 
but I might have to mirror and weld it later. We'll figure that out. Okay. So pull alt here, here, and here, and here. See, that might not work out really well because the loop is a bit off. Right? So maybe that's the, the front of the speeder. Uh, we could do another cube or something like that. Or, you know, you can always append and come in and just grab the same thing, like grab a, a 3D cube and turn it into a Q cube and do the same thing. But a lot of times I just like to be I do like uh, the M IMM primitives and there's already a Q cube in there. So, you know, just take it and start working it like so. The split mask points, take this out, move it. Stretch it out a bit, and let's see. Right. B and Z again. Z modeler. Take and put an extra loop in here, and then one of the things that I like to do is use lasso to basically just, um, oops, select a. Uh, Mask lasso, rather. Sorry. Uh, mask lasso out, you know, just like a part of the loop. And then if I hold control and basically tap on the canvas, I'm inverting that mask, right? Uh, and then I could use my widget to basically move around those poly faces like I would in a poly editor. And so, you know, it kind of works. Um, let me grab some of these faces here, and I'm just hitting Alt for the, the actual individual faces, or single poly, basically, on a Q mesh. Uh, and then you can set your, you know, alignments, so like quarter step, half step, full step. And do this, and just pull this out ever so slightly. And maybe, 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 do like a, another loop. Answer. You know, come up with something. Maybe push this down. Oh, that's kind of neat. Pull this and pull this again. And with this one, I'm actually going to bridge the two in between. So probably take this and pull it. And if it snaps, usually it will mirror and weld itself so that you can do some other things with it. But, you know, I start blocking out shapes like this, um, especially, you know, here in ZBrush. And I keep these pieces kind of like poly uh, because I'm going to try to work with them in other places. So like, let's say, for example, I want to work up these two details uh, pieces a little bit more. So what I'll do is from ZBrush, you know, it's easy enough to make uh, a Q cube and start, you know, pulling it into shape. But, you know, I could save this uh, adversely, you know, just by itself or just hide everything. You know, if you hold shift and hit click on these eyes, uh, the, the eye icon on the subtool layer. Um, you can actually individually turn on stuff that you want because it'll turn everything else off. And I'll just take and export this. All right, you know, actually, stop. You can go back to Z plugin. Uh, if your model is complex enough, or even if it's not, if you just need the block pieces, I would just save maybe even a FPX. Um, and then just, you know, visible, then S normal. S normal in this case, not really necessary because, you know, I'm not, I don't want to smooth the normals to actually work the normal detail, right? And I could do selected, but that would just be this one selected tool. So I'm going to do it actually a little bit more. Um, it'll just take the visible. So export it. I'm just going to call this uh, B. Right, and save it just as a part. File exported really quick. Okay, and let's see. I'm gonna open up Blender. Taking a sec. Alright, 
let's see if I could do this in 20 minutes and have some fun. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, clear it by hitting X, so that cute default cube is gone. And then I'm gonna hit B inside the blender, blender interface, and I'm gonna hide basically what is the camera and the default light, right? So I'm gonna hit H to do that. And I'm just gonna go in here and import FBX and go looking for the one that I just saved out. Uh, let's see. Derpity derp derp derp. Should be down here. FBX. B. There we go. Import it. And this is really teeny tiny. It, sometimes every once in a while when you're dealing between scale, uh, between um, ZBrush, I think, you have to scale it there or else it'll come in like super, super tiny. So I'm just gonna hit the period so that I can zoom in on this. And then I'm gonna have to resize it and get it a little bit larger. Plus the axis is off, as you can tell, because I believe this was in back and this was in front. So I'm gonna hit three from the side and I'm gonna actually take it and rotate it a little bit straight so that we can deal with it a little better. And then I'm gonna also scale it uh, pivot point being down here um, in the middle I guess is where it was but let's move that actually forward so I'm going to take my world space widget and bring it towards what would be the actual axis a little bit better and I'm going to also hit control A for, and hit select location rotation and scale and that should uniformly scale it or change the pivot to exactly the center cursor at the center point of the axis, right? So then I can take uh, and do some other things. Like, um, let's hit this. These are two parts, right, in the collection. And then I can take this and do like a, a mirror and weld with it. So I'm gonna use a box cutter to do that. Alt X, get some symmetry out of it. Same with this guy. And as you can see, if I tab into it, it's still our QQ, but it's probably got like some marked seams to keep the, the edge sharp or something like that. But we could always change this up. And then I would, you know, just do some complex booleans here, you know, and then move those back to ZBrush. So, you know, like maybe if I want to bevel these edges, do that really quick. And come here and do one, two, three, four, one, two, or do a bevel on that. That looks kind of neat, right? And these would shape up to be ingons, but you know, you, you can work around ingons. You can actually even solve some of them to um, use as uh, poly quads, you know? Like, you, it just depends on sort of the way that you can cut. But I would take something like this um, and start using something like box cutter to like take it and basically cut up uh, some complex balloon shapes like uh, let's say if I want to do something like this do an ingon shape I love ingon shapes dude ingons are rad yeah. don't be fooled some people will tell you ingons are horrible but they're actually not that bad there we go and I'll do that and basically what I've done is I might have to change sort of like the smoothing angle of this one but it's actually taking this out so actually let me see something here I can probably do this uh, I have to take the data and do like a weighted normal thing with it so, where is that is it normals geometry data Sorry, there we go. There we go. That way, it's nice and sharp over here, and it takes the smooth normal that was in it out. And then I'm gonna get symmetry out of this. I'm gonna hit Alt X. Oops. Hold on a second. There we go. I'm gonna hide this. Take this. Not for sure why, but for some reason, 
My symmetry seems to be bugging out, but I think that's probably because the axis is up here and I'm not seeing it. So I'm actually going to fix that. There we go. And then activate box cutter and flip it. There we go. Uh, and you could keep building up, you know, different cuts and then bring that back to ZBrush. And I think I've, I've also already covered stuff like that, so I'm not going to go too far. But once you customize your shapes, you can kind of bring them back in as your own kit bash back into ZBrush. So let's just make a few cuts here and I'll see how it goes. Pull this out, cut off part of that face, and I'll hold shift and commit it, hide it, take this piece, do the same, clear custom split normal data, get that back sharp and in, in, in view, uh, and uh, maybe do a couple more shapes. that okay that's a few that's enough so take this actually want to grab one thing and change it uh, come on tab two there we go there we go one I just want to take this and move it move a few of these birds oops and probably need to view this uh, as a wireframe and then grab because sometimes the grab for the vertices doesn't grab the other side unless you have like x-ray enabled doesn't sometimes it misselects and doesn't grab everything and I'm going to grab both sides of those verts and I'll tab out and go back to render view or solid view. Actually, I, want, I need solid view. There we go. And so that's enough detail for that. And so now I just want to take that plus this, or the shapes that we have. I don't think I cut anything apart. And just resave it again as an FBX. And so I'll just hit export. Oops. Export uh, FBX. Not much changes other than that, and uh, keep the same name. I'll just rename this a different name. Test parts A, save it here, and export FBX. And I'll go back to ZBrush, and I can pin a another star inside the data which probably put it on the bottom I'll select it and go ahead and just import and go and find the other FBX that I just saved out so uh, I think it was test part A or something like that uh, oh actually wrong place need to go into the Z plugin FBX import and export is on this side so I'll import and go and find the FBX file that I just saved again Test parts A, open, and bam, I should have brought it in. And as you can see, probably a little bit of the polys it damaged because of the cuts. So one of the best things to do in this case, if you ever get this, um, is basically try saving it as an OBJ and be sure to hit triangulate uh, on the export out because otherwise it doesn't now. And see so what it did it is it from box cutter it actually brought in the cutter shapes that I was working with. And I actually miss showed it. It's actually not supposed to be in there, so it's probably saving everything that's visible, and, and everything that's not. That is a bit of a flaw in the process. But um, if I was to go back, just really quick, export, and I'll say export as a wavefront OBJ, uh, and just over here on the side of this, I believe. 
Oh, they changed up some of the export window in Blender a little bit. Hmm. Interesting. Um, material groups, uh, things to include. Um, scale should be the same. And let's see. This should be here. Uh, objects is OBJ objects. Selection only. And there should be more towards the geometry. So the geometry tab is where you want apply modifiers, uh, which will not show the cutters. Uh, smooth groups. Um, sometimes if you need uh, smoothed uh, normals or whatnot, you can click, click and check that. I'm going to actually turn on triangulate faces, and that should be it. Export OBJ, come over here, try and do it again on the same tool. Um, I actually don't need this anymore, or even if I do, I'll just uh, import over it again. And uh, go down. And that untitled OBJ is probably it. And there you go, a little bit cleaner, right? So it, it has the actual original pieces still in the file when it imported, I think. Uh, but um, hence, the cuts that we made in box cutter uh, in Blender are still there, right? So I would just have to probably take this subtool and size it up like my last and put that into shape right so if this was turned on I'm going to take uh, this piece here go to the widget hit alt move this over here turn this scale this move it into place and you have your piece right so I can take this and actually just hide it or delete it go back to here scale it up and I'm just using this as basically sort of like just a form or a block that I'm gonna actually touch up later right and so that's just like a little poly mess that I can I can sort of build later I can either you know dynamesh it or make some more you know like sort of like planner cuts to it or uh, boolean cuts to it or what have you um, but you know all of your framework or thumbnailing having been done in VR it's a cool process to work with you know between ZBrush so any last questions before I finish up I notice that we have like about 10 minutes I can answer questions if anybody wanted to ask anything yes no yes no no yes okay all right so that in mind, I am actually going to do this. Uh, sorry. Ooh. There we go. Let me take a moment to see. Oh, whoops hands are backwards there we go all right let's open up oculus again i want to show you guys something take another look at something else all right so to load and uh, I have actually a third piece that I have been working on we're gonna come back to this bike in fact um, I actually wanted to make some time to uh, do some captures here really soon so hopefully I would say look forward to some videos especially around my YouTube channel um, where I'm gonna actually try to record a little bit more of this process uh, in depth just do like a time lapse and I will show you guys some of what I've been working on. Alright, so here's a third piece that I, I did, and this is probably one of the first hard surface models that I did in VR. Um, and as you can see, it's just working with symmetry and bringing it into, you know, ZBrush finally at the end. But 
mostly everything here was sculpted, and this is this is not like uh, you know coming from kit bashes necessarily. Like there's a, only a few pieces that were kit bashed, and if they were brought in, they were brought in as clay, and so like they've been muted, you know, from their detail more into into clay shapes, um, so that I can you know sculpt on stuff. Uh, especially this headpiece here, like this was just sculpted using Dynamesh inside of a ZBrush. Uh, this is all like just a Damien standard brush just to do a little bit of scoring and like uh, do like production lines on stuff. Uh, and then only accented here and there with a few little small bits of like kit bash, sometimes my own stuff, uh, sometimes some other stuff. Um, you know, kits that I bought or collected over the years, um, put on into it by clay um, but yeah you can bring them in as OBJs and just sort of to overview this medium was sort of like the beginning of where you know I started and then I move into ZBrush so I just want to go inside this guy really quick because this is really cool to see so I designed this guy so that a pilot could reach out and grab these bars here and here and control the exo set of arms on the outside Right, kind of like a uh, alien or something like that, and so you know it's an exosuit. So this is the, actually the inside of a frame that I'm building, and uh, I'm sure probably later I'm gonna come back and finish up the shell for the legs and the leg me mechanisms. But there's like little control handles here and here, uh, and then I even just went in and clay and made you know like a little hand fist knuckle. Of course, these would be very difficult to probably work out. I'd have to do some retopology or maybe some optimizing uh, to make this this animatable. But I am looking into some options, kind of like uh, Masterpiece VR, to kind of do some rigs inside of that. So it's going to be a lot of back and forth experimentation from here out over the months, uh, doing some things inside of ZBrush and also doing some side things inside of Oculus Medium and using everything else in my pipeline so that I can kind of um, create something of a, a sort of like cinematic motion piece uh, and maybe get them to be animatable, right? So hopefully uh, I'll have you guys along to share in the journey. And again, I want to thank you for joining me here on, on Saturday as I, I ramble on about uh, all things ZBrush and 3D modeling. Um, but in all professionalism, I thank you for joining me. Uh, today on the Saturday afternoon. Cheers. Okay. So lastly, um, last uh, call on any questions that anybody might have. If, uh, you should have them. Let me check my screen. To hit on? On, on, on what? <laughs> exactly. Ah. Uh, Oh, snap. Did I actually have ZBrush forward and it's not showing the medium window? My bad. Sorry, I didn't see that. Uh, actually, hold on just a second. I feel so bad sometimes. It's kind of hard to see the real screen. There we go. Sorry about that. I should have actually minimized that. But, uh... <laughs> what I was actually literally showing you guys was this. Um, sorry if I had ZBrush in the foreground on my screen. It's kind of hard uh, to realize what is being shared and what is not being shared. But um, if anybody didn't catch this at first, uh, do let me know. Yeah, there we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, there, there's a screensaver with uh, ZBrush 2019, and if it's still, you know full screened in the foreground it's going to take over even if i flip over to medium i see vr but you guys unfortunately don't see it you know so here is what i was talking about okay so just really quick um i'm going to show you guys this this was a, a full scale model that i was kind of working with that is just sculpted objects right no not too much kit bash probably like 10 percent or less kit bash but the inside of that mech again, if you scale it up and look inside. If I put my arms through here, I should be able to reach the control handles in front, you know, like an operator. And so your hands would kind of literally go outside of this 
you know, like it maybe in a suit, and then you would have like a front hatch that would open up, maybe the head opens up, or maybe a client, a pilot climbs in and back. And then if I scale it down, you can kind of see some of the details in the sky. And so, you know, these are all voxel just sculpted. No kit bash in there, just building shapes, reducing shapes. Uh, I think I did the head separate too, and then joined it, and then created arms, the inner arms. Uh, and I'm still working on the torso, uh, the hip assembly and stuff like that. But yeah, this makes for a nice little model. And some of, when you view it, sometimes the ambient occlusion shadows that it gives, it's really nice to kind of understand how light hits an object uh, and forms, right? So there we go. So next time in a round, we're going to do some stuff like this, and I'll take you through the whole process. Um, I have to work out a few technical issues working between VR and ZBrush, but there, at least, we should have a nice little introduction, friends. Yeah, snapshot is odd. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Cheers. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we are at the top of the hour. Um, be sure to cut, send me any comments if you can look me up either on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I usually do it all. YouTube, that sort of thing. And uh, I will try to get back to you if you guys think of anything in post that you want to ask or you know any advice that you want to ask. I'm, I'm always open to a good question. Alrighty, folks. Thanks a lot, and thanks for joining me this Saturday. Uh, <laughs> you know, just drive down the street in a Tesla with headset on and it'd just be like, yeah, man, I'm driving in VR. That's what's up. Cool, cool. And uh, be sure, and I, I'm usually not very good with plugs, but I will say of the experience, it is most enjoyable. If you get a chance and you live locally here in Los Angeles or in Southern California, be sure to check out ZBrush Live coming soon, probably next weekend. Actually, you know, make sure you go online to pixelogic.com, register for... Zebras Live and go because if you go, I'll see you there. Cheers, everybody. Thank you, and have a totally awesome, awesome weekend. Take care.